Hi, my name's Patricia. And I'm Susan. And um, I have something just burning and bubbling up in me that I just want to share. And some people might think it's like going back to the basic teachings. You know, I'm a Christian. Been a Christian for, what, 24 years? And Susan? Oh, it's been actually since the Lord brought me back to him. It's about 15 years now. Yeah. So, I mean, we're church-going people, and but I, I'm amazed at what I'm seeing. And could I just share a little oh, bit? Do it's it. just yeah. like yeah. bubbling up out of me. You know, God, I, I was like seeking God, saying, you know, well, you know, I'm seeing all these Christians with horrible diseases. Um, you know, uh, the world is in a shaky place. And, you know, even preachers are preaching, oh, everything that can be shaken will be shaken in the last days. Well, I was like, yeah, Lord, but where's a safe place to put my feet, you know, as a Christian in these times of shaking? I don't want to be sick with some horrible disease. I don't want to be in catastrophe. I would think that with Jesus we would find a safe place. He told me, I heard a clear word, honestly. He said, go to the finished work of the cross and stay there. So I started meditating on that, and it's been so exciting. I heard different preachers that are preaching, actually, the true gospel like Paul preached. And let me just say that Paul was a great, great orator. He was like the cream of the crop, a, a Jew's Jew. He went to the finest, best schools, or shuls, they might call them, and he was um, kosher. He was everything. He was the rabbi's rabbi. Very intelligent, very uh, well educated, but he could make any subject so interesting. And they had a very uh, intelligent and well developed culture in Greece back then, you know, much like today, maybe even more developed. And they, they didn't want any silly, simple teachings. But after he met Jesus and got a revelation of what Jesus did on that cross for us and the finished work, he said, you know what, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God for salvation. A lot of people today are preaching about, maybe they preach about women's rights one week, or maybe they preach about uh, the next week grace and then don't get into sloppy grace you know make sure your behavior it's all like back and forth and in and out but I want to say that we're in the new covenant and the new covenant is what we have to realize uh, what we have in that Jesus said it's finished so he not only forgave us all our sins actually paid the price for our sins you know took the punishment for our sins on the cross but all the sicknesses of the entire world were put on him, on his body, and he bore them. He bore our suffering, he bore our sorrows, our shame. So we don't have to bear it anymore. So you need to meditate on these things. I need to meditate. It's so big, how can we let it all in? By thinking about it, talking to him about it, just believing him as a believer. That's what we're supposed to do. I just believe you, Lord. And then he gave us his righteousness which means that it doesn't really matter if we mess up we're not tr you know some people would say oh that's going to give people a license to sin people don't need a license to sin they sin anyway they mess up even when they don't want to it's the law that gives sin its power and stirs up sin grace actually um, frees you from that continual pattern of guilt shame repeating the offense so we don't have to worry and tell people, oh, but don't get into sloppy grace, you know, make sure you keep yourself in those Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are in the Old Covenant. The New Covenant is about receiving, simply receiving what Jesus did and knowing that now when the Father, our Father God sees us, He sees Jesus. He just wants to shower us with blessings. but we haven't been letting it in because we feel like we don't deserve it. Well, I didn't really, you know, I messed up. I had a bad temper yesterday. I wasn't really... That is all forgiven. And so it's part of this just meditating on that finished work. And I just wanted to, like, get that out right off the bat. And uh, also that Paul preached, you know, to these sophisticated people in all different societies. And 
he just preached the simplicity of Christ crucified and what that means, what he bought for us on that cross. And uh, he didn't get into his great oratory skills and, and pride himself on making it so interesting. It is interesting when you realize that uh, what you have in Jesus because what he bought for you, I'm telling you, it gets real interesting. Don't you think so? <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that's really the key mm -hmm. is that our uh, focus and um, our thoughts are continually on him because he is he is all powerful he is all beautiful he is all glorious he is our all in all and to really um, take our focus off of ourselves because we know that we have all fallen short of the glory I mean we um, are living in a sinful world it's a fallen world and so um, we haven't come to perfection yet although the Lord is working in us from glory to glory to transform us into his image and so it's his grace it's his grace and it's not anything that we are even capable of doing without his grace and so all we can do really is just um, have a grateful heart and to just um, again have our eyes fixed and focused on the author and finisher of our faith and to know that as we behold him you know it's in his presence that we are changed and so to just um, <clears throat> be uh, focused on abiding in him and him in us and um, all these other things um, are things that he accomplishes in us and so I know we're speaking also to people that uh, may not know uh, Jesus yet as their personal Lord and Savior and um, it's really what it is is a relationship mm -hmm. it's a relationship That's right. and um, he is a person yeah. he's a, a spiritual being as we are spiritual beings and so um, it's nothing complicated and it's really the easiest thing in the world to just say Jesus um, come into my heart come into my life I want to know you um, and make yourself real to me so that I know that you are real and it's just an invitation I want to know you Jesus mm -hmm. and he is sure to uh, reveal himself to you in uh, an unmistakable ways and so uh, once we've done that it's a matter of uh, having conversation with him he is our best friend um, he is the son of the Most High God, um, our Heavenly Father, and so he makes a way to be reconciled to our Heavenly Father and to really come into relationship with our uh, Heavenly Father also. And so it's just being very real, very real with uh, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and uh, if you're real with him, he will be very real with you. And so um, the more we come to know him, the more we just fall in love with him over and over again. And yeah, we just adore him and we can't help but worship him. And we gain a greater and greater um, understanding of his goodness for us and all that he has intended for us. You know, God is really good and the gospel is the good news and it's all good everything good is from God and so um, if we uh, can keep our mind you know the, the battle really is in the mind and so we just uh, take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ which is um, a, the way of um, retraining our minds in a way or just um, meditating on on the scriptures you know the Word of God uh, it really does make a difference what we um, allow into our consciousness or into our minds through what we read every day or what we see on television they have they have uh, an influence on us we might not even think it does or realize it but when we can uh, really um, take take the decision to say I'm going to uh, feed or read things that are helpful to me 
that are beneficial to me, that are powerful, and can help my mind to think. You know, we get a renewed mind to think good things, to think the things of, of, of the Lord. And so that is why we, um, that we spend time reading the Word of God, the Bible, um, so that we can come to know Jesus as He really is. And, um, and it is a meditation, especially the New Covenant. I think mm -hmm. this is something that we're really getting um, more and more revelation on, is um, the, the, really the difference between the Old and the New Testaments which were old and new covenants and that um, with uh, the death of Jesus on the cross he um, was the only um, perfect the Son of God perfect to take the sins of the world upon himself and so um, you know the our uh, Father God is a just God and he cannot deny himself. In other words, um, just as you expect a judge to be um, to judge equitably, so you would expect that of a good heavenly Father that he is he is um, fair. In other words, and so he required something to um, for payment of uh, things that had gone terribly wrong with the fall in um, the Garden of Eden. And so he does nothing against our will. He created us so that we would choose to love him. And um, so um, just as he is a just uh, God, he does require a payment. In other words, as a judge, a, a, a payment for uh, anything that is not right. And so the law pointed us into a direction that we um, cannot, we could not uh, uh, be righteous or to follow all the laws that are written in the Old Testament. We, do it. we just, you know, even though we, we our heart wants to and we want to do it, um, it's just not a part of our fallen nature again um, that happened back at the beginning. And so everything points to this need for a savior, someone um, that really he paid the price for us for uh, all eternity. And um, that was the shed blood of Jesus on the cross. And so um, we are forgiven and we are righteous because of the price that he paid. And so um, we are just so grateful in our understanding of this that there is great liberty and this is where um, there is no such thing as the the um, the grace that is too much or you know it's it can't be all grace because we are just our hearts are changed and our uh, our mo our motives are changed we just want to be uh, pleasing to the Lord and we are pleasing to the Lord and so it's he sees Jesus when he looks yes, at us. Exactly. He sees the finished work. Exactly. And, uh, so, like, even though our hearts want to please him, we'll go along doing well, and then we'll mess up. And basically, what people usually do is then they feel guilty. They feel like, well, I can't ask for this because I messed up. But really, if you're meditating on that finished work that Jesus did, always point it back to Jesus, like mm -hmm. Susan said, you mm -hmm. know. There's a scripture that says, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. And uh, where is Jesus right now? He's at the right hand of the Father, mm -hmm. seated. Mm -hmm. The work is finished. He sat down. He's above every principality and power. Mm -hmm. He has authority over everything right now. Mm -hmm. And where are we? We are in Christ. Christ is in us. We're in Christ. It says in another scripture, we're seated with him in heavenly places. So, these are things you have to meditate on. 